Let them down by that's fine if you, if you really if you can stage the traffic, which you maintain the traffic plan, that you can continue to have that traffic flowing through March while you're working. That's ideal if you can keep keep using that road. And now as you start entertaining the ideas of alternates, it's got to be it, it, you can't leave up to the driver of do I want to do A, B, or C. You're creating confusion at those points where they have to now go to the alternate route. You want them on the alternate route, put them on the alternate route. But what I want you to think about when you look at these alternate routes in particular is would you normally allow that level of traffic, that weight of traffic on those particular streets that you're directing them down? That no. you get and you also need to think about all those curb cuts, all those residents. Isn't there a conflict with? Drivers backing in and out of their drive squad, you've got marsh road level of service traffic now. Yeah, my recommendation based on the pavement rehabilitation times uh, would just be to keep marsh road following the maintaining traffic plan. Um, it's for a short amount of time. Uh, it may be a hassle during construction, but uh, we've all dealt with construction and it'll be for such a short time that I believe drivers will be able to account for the Longer I, I think you should stick with the marsh road as your primary. You may, um, in terms of outreach to the residents, you may suggest to them that they take some alternate routes. Now, you don't necessarily have to tell them where to go. Just say, heads up, there's going to be some traffic in here that you might want to detour around this. But if you're going to actually um, lay out a specific alternate route, you've got to make sure that it's the same road classification as the one you're taking traffic off of. I only have a couple of minutes left. Uh, All right, at Judac, uh, Agent TV, uh, folks most in transportation. Um, so we'll, we'll stick here for a minute. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stick a bit. I think exactly where we're going, these witnesses would be signed detours, and, and yes, that, that would be a problem, and you have to consider where the traffic goes. And the, the common scenario is when a, when a freeway or highway closes and you have to get people off of it, you run that all the time, you run them on county roads, and you know, that oftentimes there's infighting between the county and the state on, <coughs> you mess up my pavement. Um, where I do think this is good and where this could go is what, what we probably want to do is to be able to justify that that the level of service on Marsh Road is going to be sufficient to be able to use, do a part with, and do a maintaining traffic. We take a look at the ADT and AD on it now, you know, based on it being, you know, being four lanes, and then compare that to if once you get it down two lanes, does that present um, undue delay? If so, then you would probably look at these. Do you actually need to assign a detour or not? So. You kind of started and you got some piece of information that if you went further to make that call to say, yes, we definitely need this or not. So just kind of to wrap that up. Um, just, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, so you showed, you know, creating ATs traffic numbers, uh, use the growth rate of 2% in, in coordination with pavements. Just a question for, for both of you. It's 2%. Do you feel 2% is realistic for this area? Me personally, I, I don't. Not for the for these roads, but that was one of those things where I, I think I might have just been. <clears throat> I, I actually calculated following population um, as well as uh, following traffic estimations. So those numbers were coming from the Tri-County Traffic Database um, and sort of as using those numbers to estimate uh, growth rates. So I believe the growth rate is adequate. Um, if the other proposed project, the Hassan Square Development, goes into place, obviously, Truck numbers will be jacked up, and uh, as the area becomes more developed, maybe two or three, four percent will be adequate. Okay, and I mean the two percent figure in a rock with it is tri county area is, is probably good. Typically, you apply that more to the arterials and everything. It, you know, I think you kind of got to it on residential street, you have X number of houses, potentially fewer if, if some of your you know, acquisitions and so. You know, sort of two percent a year on a residential street, but um, yeah, you use something and you want to some, some kind of growth as far as pavement. You don't want to design it at, at a minimum. So just a comment there. Um, I, I like to use the MDOT typicals and, and everything else. You know, this kind of muddy that discussion about the use of the typicals and the 
location there I thought was very good. Um, so, so good job of that. What can we think? Um, didn't talk at all about the actual signalized intersection at Marsh and Haslett and, and what happens there, um, especially, especially when you have a reduction in capacity north on Marsh there. Um, any timing changes? Did you look at look at that level service wise? Okay. Um, last thing, kind of on the roads and, and related to the overlay part of it. Um, obviously, the overlay is relying on that everything else you have below it is pretty good. Being that there have been some significant drainage issues here and standing water, is do you really is the base okay, um, or do you um, think you need to look at that further? I believe it needs to be looked at further. Um, if there's areas of localized, uh, severe uh, sub base or base um, problems, uh, maybe that uh, section of the road would be, need to be constructed, placing a proper base and sub base. Uh, the soils on the site aren't the best. Um, but I believe in most areas, with the exception of near the localized area of the plank, um, the base and sub base should be adequate. Okay. Thank you.